Hi, hi. welcome to uh, uh, the flip classroom. This is the uh, second uh, lesson from chapter six on uh, linear functions. And uh, 6.2 covers the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay. So um, to start with, let's get a definition of, of parallel lines, okay? So from elementary school, most of you have uh, an idea that parallel lines are two lines that never cross or two lines that always stay the, stay the same distance apart. Um, when you see arrows such as these here, here, and here, um, that tells you those arrows indicate the two lines are parallel. So what we want to do in this section is we want to look at what's true about the slopes of parallel lines. So if we look at those two lines and we investigate the slope, uh, if we look at AB, you would see here that its rise is 2 and it has a run of 4. Okay, and CD also has a rise of 2 and a run of 4. And if we were to just quickly calculate the slope of both AB and CD, we would see that they both have a slope of 2 over 4. Okay. So they both have slopes that are equal to a half. So what is true about parallel lines is that they have equal slopes. Okay. So another way of saying that is that if two lines are if two lines have equal slopes, then they are parallel. So if the slopes of two lines are equal, So if the slopes of two lines are equal, then the lines are parallel. Okay. So we're going to go on and, and work with this, this little definition here. Um, in example one, we're asked to identify whether either of the three lines that were given are parallel, okay? So um, your notes don't have these lines drawn, so I think what you should probably do now is stop the video, draw those lines on your, on your page, and then restart the video, and we'll, we'll look at the slopes of these lines and try to determine if any of those lines are parallel to one another, okay? Okay. So if I look at the slope of line AB, its rise, I'm going to use the formula to start with first of all, um, the formula y2 subtract y1, that gives me my change in y or my rise, divided by x2 subtract x1, which gives me my change in x or my run. Okay, so if I look at AB, um, I have change in y of 7 of 7 subtract negative 2 and my change in x is negative 3 subtract negative 5 okay um, so if I if I simplify that um, I'm running a little short of room here but that's going to be 7 plus 2 over negative 3 subtract negative 5 is negative 3 plus 5. So that is going to give me a slope of 7 plus 2 is 9, negative 3 plus 5 is 2. So that's going to give me a slope of 9 over 2. Um, if I do the same thing for EF, calculate the slope of EF, I would see that my change in Y is 6 subtract negative 2 and my change in x is negative 1 subtract negative 3. Okay, so simplifying that, that's going to give me 6 plus 2 over negative 1 plus 3. So that's going to give me 8 over 2. And 8 over 2 reduces to 4 over 1. 
So what I know right now is that AB and EF are not parallel to one another because they don't have the same slope. So let's see if CD is parallel to either one of these two lines. Okay, so CD, um, if I calculate the slope of CD, my change in Y is going to be 7 subtract negative 3 over 1 subtract negative 1 for my change in X. So that's going to give me 7 plus 3 over 1 plus 1. So that's going to be 10 over 2 that's going to be equal to reduce to 5 over 1. So if we look at those three lines, um, to the naked eye, it's pretty hard to know that neither or none of the neither pair of lines are parallel. Okay? We've got one with a slope of 9 over 2, the other one with a slope of 4 over 1, and the third one with a slope of 5 over 1. So what we can say is that since No two lines have the same slope. Since no two lines have the same slope, there are no parallel lines. Okay. Had um, had any of the lines turned out to have the same slope, then we would have had parallel lines. But in this case, there weren't weren't any. And you know, if you look at those lines, it's a little bit hard to tell that. I would have thought that uh, at least AB and DC were parallel, but they're not. Okay, we'll go on to the next example. Um, so, uh, so this this topic is on parallel and perpendicular lines. So here comes the perpendicular lines part of it. Um, so a definition of perpendicular lines. Uh, two lines are perpendicular if where they intersect, they form a 90 degree angle. So on our graph here, we can see that uh, this box here, okay? When you see a box in an angle, it tells you that you've got a 90 degree angle, okay? So you need to fill in 90 degrees here, okay? So let's find out what's true about the slopes of lines that are perpendicular by calculating the slope of AB and then the slope of CD. So if I calculate the slope of AD, I need the change in Y, so that's going to be the subtract the Y coordinate, so 6 subtract negative 2 over the change in X. So I'll subtract the X coordinate, 7 subtract 1. So 6 subtract negative 2 works out to 6 plus 2 over 6. Now 6 plus 2 is 8, so we've got 8 over 6, and that reduces to 4 thirds. So the slope of AB is 4 thirds. Um, we'll look again, now we'll look at the slope of CD. So if I calculate the slope of CD, I'm going to need to, to take the change in Y, so that's going to be 8 subtract negative 1 over the change in X is going to be negative 4 subtract 8. So 8 subtract negative 1 is the same thing as 8 plus 1, and 4 subtract 8 is negative 12. So this gives me 9 over 12, uh, negative 12 I should say, and that reduces to negative uh, 3 quarters. Okay. So let's, uh, we've got the slope of AB is 4 thirds, and the slope of CD is negative 3 quarters, okay? So let's just compare these two numbers and see what we can say about them. Okay, so when we compare uh, negative 3 quarters with 4 thirds, we note that 3 quarters and 4 thirds are reciprocals, all right? And negative 3 quarters and 4 thirds are described as being negative reciprocals. So I'll give you another example of negative reciprocals. If I have uh, five halves, okay, the negative reciprocal of five halves is negative two over five. Okay, so 
one, uh, one slope has to be positive, the other slope has to be negative, okay? And then the numbers have to be flipped. So um, in, at the bottom of the page here, we have a bit more of a formal definition. It says, the slopes of perpendicular lines, the slope of two perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals. That is, if you have a line with a slope A over B, so that would be your positive slope, okay? Then the perpendicular line will have the slope negative B over A, okay? So let's go on and uh, apply this rule, okay? So in example two, Comparing 